Uh, do it. Hey everyone, this is David. Welcome back behind the velvet rope. Let's just get right into it today because we are joined by the ones, the only Miss Nikki Harris and Donna Delory. I mean, thank you guys for coming in. We were just saying before, it is hard to get the two of you in one place. So I am truly, this is not lost on me. It's not going to be lost on these listeners. And it's, thank you. I appreciate it. Okay, why is it hard for to get us in one place? What's that about? Well, well. You okay. live. You live in Georgia. I live here too. And, I got the place. And she here. lives here too. It's yeah, true. Like it's not, no, but, you just got to call us. I mean, and you guys are busy. You know, you have a show coming up October. This, it is 5th. very special that we're here today. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm okay. I'm gonna go with that. It's yeah. special. I'm just like you. Just have to call us. It's, it's not that's that hard. true though. It's special to me. So thank you. You can call us anytime. Okay. Well, you guys can come back anytime. Huh? Now you tell us. Yeah. Now we. Now I know where to park. Yeah. It's cool. Exactly. I, I mean, listen. <laughs> it's L.A. realness. We're on Sunset at Melrose Podcast Studio. Which so is great. Right. It's cute. Great. It's sweet little, pl- little I never space. even knew this existed, but this great. is my little stomping ground around here. Yes. So everyone's. It's conveniently located. Well, listen. I want to talk all about your shows coming up, and we have a lot of and your guys' music. But let's just start at the beginning. You know, when you guys first both auditioned. From Madonna, oh like I'm sure you've told this. I mean, let's start with a little Madonna and get that out of the way, and then you know, get into you guys. Like when you guys <clears> first <throat> auditioned, like what was that like? Like where do you remember that? I'm sure you've told this story many times. I, I've told it. I've told my story many times. So I'll try to put a little different, a uh, little different perspective. Um, I'd been working with Pat Leonard because I did the demo for the song called "Open Your Heart," and there's a whole story with that. But anyway, he heard that. He called me one day and said, I love your voice. Will you come and sing a bunch of my songs that I've written? So I started hanging out at his house off of uh, Coldwater, in Coldwater Canyon. And all of a sudden, he's like, will you come sing with Fee Weibel and Carly Simon and Christopher Cross and all these records he was producing? So I was over there every week doing these sessions. Now, that was a big upgrade in my life because I'd been doing like working at a publishing company, splicing tape, waitressing, everything else. And I finally had a, a producer that was hiring me enough. That I could, that could be my job. So I heard about the tour coming up and I kept bugging him and nudging him like, you got to get me in there. I dance too. But he, he just knew me like as a demo singer. And he kept saying, ah, they already hired people. It's not going to happen and everything. So then I got, I got like a panicked phone call one day to go into an audition because one of the girls wasn't working out and they were open. She was opening to auditioning new people. So I went to, I think it was Leeds. It was a big, or SIR it ended up being an open call audition for me. And I was in there with every singer I'd seen, like in the clubs and everything. We went up in groups of three and we had to sing La Isla Bonita unison part, which is not easy with people you've never sung with. So in the the middle of the whole thing, and it wasn't sounding that great, and Pat stopped us and said, you know, just Donna and Madonna sing the bridge together. And thank God I knew the bridge, so... That uh, that was my. I think that was the. It, it was the first step that I got the job, and then I had to dance the next day and do the whole thing. And I didn't know for probably a week of going every day if I really had it wow. or not. Yeah. What about you? Finally, I got a call because I had no idea who this Madonna person was. I had been doing stuff, you know. F- uh, for a movie called Flash Dance, you know, did stuff with Michael Cimbella, did stuff for. I was in the jazz world. Patrice right. Rush and sending you forget me nots, all that kind of stuff. I was R and B, had been with Anita Baker and um and then I was always had gigs like, you know, I had done tons and tons of records for Disney and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And so I was in Vegas, literally in Vegas with the Righteous Brothers of all things, and got a call, another frantic call saying we they need you there tomorrow. And Anita Baker's musical director, Bobby Lyle. So I'm picking you up from the airport and we're going to that audition. I was like, I don't even know who she is. What's, what, you know, what, I got a gig. What, what, what do I need to go here for? He's like, trust me, you need to go and do this. So I said, okay, we'll tell you what. You drive me and put, you know, and then just stay there though because I need to get back to the show, you know, in Vegas that night. So I literally got there and there's like 200 girls. And I was like, uh-uh, I'm going. And I saw Debbie, mm-hmm. who I didn't really know, but her energy was, I was like, I'm going first. Tell her, tell her I'm going first. Debbie was the musical, um, the makeup artist. She goes, you can't just, I'm like, I need to go first. I got a flight. And Madonna was like, who, like, you know, and I sang a couple of songs, but I knew, I was like, when I heard the music, I was literally learning the music on the way to the, to the gig. Um, and for me, it was just like, 
it's going to be a fun gig. And mainly because a, a, one of my friends was on the gig. Yeah. You know, Deborah Parson was yeah. on the gig. And it was because one of my girlfriends had wasn't, wasn't working out that I was going to do the gig. I was like, I didn't even really care. I just wanted her to get her, get her gig back. And I, was, I thought maybe I'd be in there for a little short period of time. And, and then it was like, it's 17 uh, songs you need to learn. You ha- need to learn this in a, I had one week before we, we were going to be opening in Japan. I was like, one week. And I had to fit the costumes. And I was like, okay, y'all, this is crazy. And then Madonna said, okay, she's got it. And literally, it felt like it felt like twenty minutes. I was in the back of the limo with her, and she was like, "Call Bill Medley of the Righteous Bread and let him know you're not coming back." And I was like, "What? I'm doing what?" And she goes, "No." I was like, "I call him." He says, "I said I, I feel bad, you know. You need to get the, somebody back to your gig, you know, and because for me, this that's what music was for me. It was just just a gig. I thought I was you know going to go do something mm-hmm. else, be a history teacher or whatever. Never was like mm-hmm. this is some career climbing path or whatever." Um, and literally he goes, what's she paying you? And I said, what are you paying me? And she told me and I called back. He goes, okay, so, um, we're going to find somebody. And that's what I know. I guess, I guess I have this gig with her. And as you all know, the rest is what it is. The rest is history. You really had no idea, like, like a virgin, like you no Mm -hmm. idea. I I didn't. I don't think I knew that. Yeah, I didn't. I mean, I didn't been listening. I didn't, I wasn't listening to that kind of music. I was like, you know, jazzer girl. And I had I had heard her singles singles on the radio like at the gym, but not right. the albums really. What? Also, also, I remember only one I did know was "Everybody Get Up, Dance, and Sing." And in the hood, mm-hmm. we thought she was black. Mm-hmm. So that was the main thing for me. It was like, oh, this is the girl who does that. That's that's what I really knew more than anything. Right. I mean, I do remember when you know. Madonna first came out. I know there was that thing where people really did think yeah. she was black before they saw the album cover. Right. That was 83, right? When yeah. everybody came out. Wow. 1983 was the first album. So, I mean, like for you guys, you know, the Who's That Girl tour, like you had been working and doing your own thing, dancing, but like for, you know, arenas that big, like were you nervous? Like did you realize what a big deal it was? Like what was it like to play like arenas that size? Like I assume for the first time. Yeah. Uh... I was nervous about just because I came in not as late as Nikki, but it still was like cramming to learn a lot of stuff. And then they would add more. Well, we're going to put you in this and da 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 da. So the end of what is that song? My main thing was my- I could never remember what arm went up at the end of okay. the song. And, and I was thinking like to that, myself, like, is it right or is it left? Yeah, my thing yeah. was I was always used to doing like you know. Especially for Disney, it's like you have to change the show up real fast. And I was used to Vegas. Mm-hmm. It's like change the show. We, what do we need to know? Let's do it. Costumes quick, fine. Yeah. I was okay with that. It was not even so much the crowd. It was I had never been in a place where I felt like okay, this is kind of dangerous because we had these. There giant, were so many the giant, elements we didn't have control. Yeah, of. the the, bl- the, bl- the uh, weather, the weather, costumes, the, um, 